Cowabunga YouTubers and YouTubeettes. That's a bit of a hint for what kind of toy reveal we have coming today. And I'm sorry it's been at least a few weeks, maybe more, since I last unboxed something. With the pool opening and the cottage weekend and all the other stuff that goes with uh, late spring, early summer. Um, it's just been a busy time. But uh, I am back. Normally I do these videos on a Sunday, but today is a Monday. I had a couple floater days at work I had to use up before the end of the month. And I picked today and another day later in the month. And of course today is the coldest day it's been in a long time. It's dreary, it's rainy, it's windy, and it's just miserable. So, but what better way to spend the time than inside shooting a video, right? Now, Cowabunga was the clue today, as you may guess by now, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's what today's unboxing focuses on. I was a massive, uh, and I still am a uh, Turtles fan, but uh, when it all hit the fan in the 80s, when they first were around, um, people everywhere were suffering from turtle phobia, or sorry, turtle phobia, turtle mania. And uh, I, was, I, was one of the, uh, I was one of the ones suffering for, from such a disease. I was all about the turtles. Now, if you don't know the history of the turtles, they began in uh, 1984 uh, based on a comic book. This original comic series uh, was created by, or co-created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, um, who, who were the co-founders of the Turtles and came up with the idea. And these original comics were a little dark uh, in, in, in their theme and their subject, nature, uh, subject matter. And also they were all in black and white. There was no color comics in these ones. So that's kind of where the Turtles got their, their, uh, their origin. And if you don't know the story of the Turtles, basically, um, four little baby turtles uh, come into contact with this uh, substance called mutagen and basically when when uh, something comes a living creature comes into contact with mutagen it causes them to mutate in 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 conjunction with whatever was the last type of creature to come into contact with them so in the turtles case it was a human that last handled them so they mutate into these anthropomorphic turtles um, and then their master uh, Splinter, who is a rat, goes through the same sort of process and he's a ninjutsu master and he brings them up in the way of uh, being ninjas. So thus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, when Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird eventually hit the big time with the turtles, it first led to a line of toys by Playmates. Which then led to a cartoon series which then led to a more light-hearted comic book series released by Archie. And then of course there were tons of other spin-offs and whatever from from this uh, original onslaught of the turtles. And I remember back in the day um, the, the, the animated series came out in 1987 in the comics soon afterwards, and that's when everything blew up. The turtles were on TV all the time. Kids everywhere loved them. And uh, I remember gobbling up. Uh, I'd, I'd watch the turtles as many times as I could a day, you know, three, four times a day across the different networks. Um, and I was always trying to get more of their toys. And then whenever something promotional was going on, I was all over it. Like I remember back in the day, the Shreddies cereal had these Ninja Turtles rings. Uh, they were just the heads of the characters, these big rings you could wear, right? And like anything like that, like I was all over it. I had turtle, turtle mania like crazy, as, as many did uh, of my generation back then. So now, the focus of today's unboxing isn't on any of those uh, aspects of the Turtles franchise that I've talked about yet. It actually came from something that arrived in the year 1990 after the animated series had already been on for a few years. And it is the live action Turtles movie. Like I said, this movie was released in, <laughs> this movie was released in the year 1990. And I was so jacked for this movie. I remember going to, uh, to our downtown to a theater that's not there anymore with my buddy from from um, public school Chris 
And we were so jacked. And I remember watching that movie. And at the time, other than maybe Star Wars or Aliens or something like that, I thought it was the best thing I'd ever seen. It was so goofy, so funny, and, and just so awesome to see a cartoon series and a comic book series of, of the, this crazy storyline with these mutant turtles brought to life on the big screen. And, and back in the day, it's, it, there was no CGI like there is now, right? It was actually guys wearing suits, which... Uh, which is awesome. So in the movie, um, the story is a little different. The, the turtles, like their master splinter, sometimes depending on the, on the, on the franchise, whether it's the comic books or the cartoon or whatever, sometimes splinter is just a rat who gets mutated into a rat human. And other times he is a human who gets mutated and the last thing he touched is a rat so he turns into a rat man. So it, it depends on which, which angle you're coming from. Um, in, the, in the live action movie, Splinter starts as a rat, I, I believe it is, um, and, and gets mutated and was last in contact with the human. So that's, uh, he turns into a rat man. So that's kind of the main difference between different aspects of the turtles outlets um, is whether Splinter was a rat first or a man first. Um, in the movie, he was a rat first. He, um, Basically, the way it starts is in New York City, there's this uh, crime, this um, th theft crime wave that's going on across the city, and it just keeps getting more rampant and more rampant. And the Channel 6 news reporter, April O'Neil, is, is trying to crack this crime wave. And uh, she ends up getting uh, caught up with some of the thieves that are, that are involved in this crime wave. And she's mysteriously rescued by these um, uh, kind of warriors that she can only see from the shadows. And, uh, and it's the turtles. And of course, they go back to the lair. They're all pumped about their, their rescue of, of, of April. And as, as the movie unfolds, they end up rescuing April again, Raph, Raphael in, in particular. And she ends up getting roughed up so they bring her back to the lair and she's basically introduced to these turtles and can't believe it right at first she's like what the fuck and then figures out that they're actually good guys and then she starts working with them um now the crime wave is being led by the turtles arch enemy who is the shredder um in the cartoon splinter is oroku saki um uh kind of a a guy that originally is from Japan and, he, and he's a ninja and his rival back in the day, they used to be friends and then they became rivals is Oroku Saki or sorry, Splinter is Hamato Yoshi and then Shredder is Oro Oroku Saki. And uh, they have this kind of rivalry between them um, that continues once Splinter is mutated. And uh, so that's kind of wh where the, the rivalry comes in is, is Shredder is the turtle's main enemy. And in this movie, he is the one behind this crime wave. And eventually, April's uh, supervisor at work, he has a, a troubled teen son who is actually one of the recruits for Shredder's crime uh, posse. And when uh, April's supervisor comes to call at her apartment one day, Danny's there with his dad and sees the turtles and reports back the findings to Shredder. And so eventually, shit hits the fan, uh, Shredder plans vengeance against the turtles and takes Splinter captive. So it's basically, the turtles end up getting their asses kicked, Splinter gets taken away by the Shredder, and basically the turtles have to rally and, and put a rocky last patch behind them before they mount an assault on the Shredder and get their master back sort of thing. So. Um, it was an amazing movie. It's probably, I probably rambled on there. I probably don't give it good justice in, you know, describing the movie, but uh, there's so many little differences in the Turtles series, depending on which comic series, which cartoon series, you know, which, which movie you watch, right? There can be these little differences. Um, so I just tried to explain that as best I could, but I probably ended up just confusing you. But anyways, it's not about the story today. It's about the toys. So what I have here are four little characters from that live action movie, the four turtles right here. This, I got these toys from AliExpress and the shipping, maybe they weren't as protected as they should have been because the box is like obliterated, but uh, 
I haven't opened it up, so let's hope that they're all intact and all the parts are in there and uh, everything is good to go. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get them out of the box and, and see how they look. Okay, turtles. Sorry for the filthy glass top here. I didn't realize it was this dirty in here. But I'm not gonna turn it, so. Okay, how are they looking? Everything here. everything so we got some of Mikey's nunchucks well packed within the packaging we got these little plastic things to cover them all right and I'm sure you know but the, the turtles love pizza right so we got a couple slices of za there's more of Mikey's nunchucks looks like they've got extra hands I see that one of Mikey's is missing. Oh, there it is right there. Definitely in there pretty good. Holy shit. So there's Mikey. Mikey had the orange bandana, and Mikey sports the nunchucks. So there is Michelangelo. Okay, he's not gonna stand up. couple extra hands there. Looks like they've got extra headbands too. And it looks like they're probably Oh no, they're the same ones. They're just in case you lose them. They're just the tails of the headbands. So there's Donatello's purple, there's Leonardo's blue, Michelangelo's orange, and Raphael's red. So now We will get Raph out of here. It's another piece of pizza. There's Raph. He's looking a little angry like he usually is, right? That's his thing. He's the angry one of the bunch. his weapon these weapons are the size Raph in his size, Mikey in his nunchucks. Raph also had a couple of extra hands. That one's giving the thumbs up. So is that one. I don't think I'm gonna separate those into individual characters. They can only use them. There's a TCRI canister. That's what contains the mutagen that changes them into Fantastic cells. Leo's Pizza. Leo's got the things you can put the swords on his back. That is his weapon. The katana blades, which I might put in there because it's kind of cool. So 
There's Leonardo and his katana blades. Some extra hands. And of course, last but not least, Donatello. Looks like he's got a tie-up thing here too. He might be able to tie his bow staff back there. Does Raph have anything? Oh, looks like he's got spots to put his size. Yeah, but I don't think Michelangelo has anything. Yeah. So they all seem to have places to put their weapons except Michelangelo. There is Donatello. His bow staff. That is his Wapunda. Michelangelo was always my favorite, and Donnie was my second. Yeah, so there you go. We each came with a piece of pizza, an extra headband, an extra set of hands, and their weapons. And then the only additional on top of that was the TCRI canister. So some pretty good accessories, pretty good packing job. And uh, yeah, everything is intact and looking good. So uh, while I clean these guys up and throw out this garbage, I'm gonna run a clip of the turtles from the movie so you can get a sense of what they looked like in the movie and how the toys translate. So take it away. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that clip. As you can see, you know, for being from 1990, it was still, you know, like I said, characters, actors in suits, um, still the real deal, no CGI. Um, it had a definite, the, the movie had a definite vibe and feel to it that, uh, like I said, at, at the time, everything Turtles captivated me and, and that movie was, was, um, was uh, no exception. And uh, you can see from, you know, the, the way they kind of talk and joke around in the movie that it's, you know, it's, it's really goofy. It's really funny, but there's also a really good story going on. It's, you know, it's really engaging. And, uh, and there's also some real serious moments too, like when they're defeated and they're hanging out at the old farmhouse and they're just so sad and depressed with Splinter gone and they had the shit kicked out of them. Um, so there's kind of a whole range of emotions in, 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 uh, in the movie. And, uh, I, I watch it, probably every couple of years at least, just to just to kind of uh, relive some of my childhood grandeur uh, because it was a, the turtles were a big part of my childhood and uh, it's always fun to bring stuff like this into your life. Um, keeping the, those childhood memories and, and, uh, and experiences, um, keep them going with, with new stuff, right? New stuff based on old stuff. So in terms of these toys, um, they're pretty good quality. They're, they're, you know, for smaller characters, they're pretty heavy. Um, all of the, the accessories and stuff seem to be quality. Um, the one thing I, I and, and the likenesses compared to the characters in the movie, that like they look identical, right? Like the, even the, the coloring, uh, the different spots on each guy's kind of face and body, um, they're all different. And I think they're probably based on how they actually look like in the movie. So they did a really good job creating these characters, recreating them um, with, with some accuracy. The only thing I don't really like about them is there is some good artic articulation in the legs. You can do some really good leg poses and, uh, and whatever. But I find the arms, they didn't, I think it's maybe the elbow pads that keep them from really... Um, moving a lot, but there's not as much articulation in the arms as I would have liked. Um, like I tried to have Leonardo look like look like he's drawn back to pull his sword out, right? Uh, but I can't quite get him to the handle because the arm won't articulate enough. So especially in the elbow, um, you know, coming forward, it seems to be very limited. So that's kind of like my only, and it's a very minor complaint about these toys. Um, but otherwise, yeah, they're just fantastic. And I'm going to add them to my shelf next to... Um, I have the original Playmates Turtles down on the shelf and then I have some from like a more the more recent kind of cartoon series they're more updated figures some from the newer generation of movies and uh, and now I'll add these guys next to them so you'll have these whole 
kind of different range of Turtles toys based on the different, you know, franchise outlets that they've uh, come up with over the years. So yeah, love these characters. Well worth the cost because to be honest, they weren't that much for these four Turtles. So I'm kind of surprised on the deal I got. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it at that because uh, um, you don't get enough deals in your life. So uh, let's hope this just is one of, one of some more that will be coming my way. Either way, love them, highly recommend them. And uh, yeah, turtle power. Meow.